Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to take you through some of the classic traps that you encounter on the QA section of the CAT. So when you take your SIM CATs and go for the actual test, hopefully you will be mindful of these traps. Let's get started. Now the first kind of trap that I'm going to talk about is when answer is expected in a particular format or they have asked for a specific kind of a question. For example, let's talk about the first example that you see on screen. So it's a very simple question where 15 lakh is getting invested at, in two different parts. The first part is getting invested at 6% annual interest. The second part is further getting divided in the ratio 2 as to 1 and being invested at two different rates, so 4% and 3%. So it's a very simple question that anybody can easily solve. The annual interest income of 76,000 is also given. But the catch in this particular question is the amount in rupees lakh invested in the fixed deposit was. And that is the question that is being asked. Now, when this was asked on the CAT, a lot of students ended up writing 900000 as the answer because this was a theta question. But if you read the question carefully, they are asking amount in rupees lakh. So the answer that was expected in theta, the box that you get, was the digit 9 and not 900000. A lot of students went ahead with 900000 and that turned out to be the wrong answer. So you have to be careful and read the question properly. Let's also look at the second example that you see on the screen. If log of 3 plus, log of 4 plus, log of x minus 1 to the base 4 and so on. So a lot of times students in a hurry end up calculating the right thing. So they will calculate x here. But the question is not asking you for x. The question is asking you what is 4x. So in a hurry, if you're solving this and you end up calculating x correctly and put that as theta, then you're going to get it wrong. So you have to be careful. Are they asking you x or x plus 2 or 4x or something else? So you have to read the question carefully to avoid this kind of a trap. The second trap that I'm going to talk about is going to be on the specific words that you see in the question, which is going to be words such as non-negative, no real, real, distinct real, and so on. So you have to understand the meanings of these words. For example, let's look at the first question. If A and B are non-negative real numbers, so when they say non-negative, they are excluding all the negative numbers that are there. But you can include zero in this particular case. So the remaining question is very, very simple. But if you forget that non-negative real numbers also include zero, then you might end up making a mistake on this question. Let's also have a look at the second question. Suppose k is any integer such that there is an equation which is given to you, it's a quadratic equation, has no real roots. Now you have to understand what is no real roots. Otherwise, it will not be possible for you to answer this question. Similarly, there is another equation where it says that it has two distinct real roots for x. So if your theory is in place, if you understand the concept correctly, because you know these words, you will be able to understand that the graph of the first equation that you see is something that will never intersect the x-axis. So it is going to be above the axis. Whereas for the second one, the graph should be intersecting the x-axis at two different points. So once you have clarity on the meanings of these words, it becomes a little easier for you to interpret the question. And if you don't get that clearly, for example, instead of no real roots, you end up reading it as real roots, it will become a problem. Similarly, if you ignore the distinct part of distinct real roots, then also it will become a problem for you. So you have to read carefully and you have to understand the meaning of these terms. The third kind of trap that I'm going to talk about is something that impacts the interpretation a lot. These words are exactly, at least, at most. So for example, the first question says, how many integers in the set have at least one digit repeated? The question becomes very different if you read it as exactly one digit repeated. Let's talk about the second example. The number of ways of distributing 15 identical balloons, six identical pencils, and three identical erasers among three children, such that each child gets at least four balloons. If you don't read it carefully, if you don't read the at least part of it, you will think that it's four balloons that is getting distributed. Again, the word identical is also very, very important in this particular question. So when they say at least four balloons, it will decide how many cases you will have to write. So that is why these words such as exactly, at least, at most, they have a lot of impact on the interpretation of the question. Moving forward, let's talk about the fourth trap. And this is the most commonly seen trap, which is flipped options. And the other side of it could be not reading carefully as well. For example, in this particular question that you see, there are two containers of the same volume. 
and there's some transfer that is happening from first to second, then second to first, and then first to second. So it's a very simple question based on mixtures. But now, if you look at the end part of the question, it says the ratio of sugar, syrup, and milk in the second container. Now, in a hurry, when you're solving it during the test, you might end up calculating it correctly, but you end up marking milk as to sugar syrup, or you might end up calculating ratio in the first container. So you have to read the question carefully. And how do you identify the traps? In a lot of these questions, you might see the options tend to get flipped. For example, a 6s to 5 and a 5s to 6, a 4s to 5 and a 5s to 4. It's a classic indication that the examiner who created that particular question expects you to fall into this particular trap. So make sure that you avoid it the next time you see. And finally, let's talk about the last kind of trap, which is leaving because questions look difficult. A lot of times students see a particular question and because it may be from an area that they are typically not comfortable with, they tend to leave such questions. For example, let's talk about the first one. What is the largest positive integer n such that there is a numerator and denominator is also a positive integer. Now, you may not be very confident of quadratic or linear equations or algebra for that matter. But is it possible for you to simply substitute? For example, can you put n equal to 6? Can you put n equal to 8, 12, 16? And just cross check if you're getting a positive integer or not. That seems easy. That seems doable. So why don't you try it? A lot of times students simply skip these kind of questions. Let's also look at one such question. A lot of times logarithms is something that students don't like. But let's have a look at this one. If log of 5 plus log of a to the base 3 and that whole thing to the base 2 is equal to 3 and there is another expression that is given to you, what will be the value of a plus b? Now, is it really that difficult? Because when you look at the first expression, log of something to the base 2 is equal to 3. Even if you know the basic rules of logarithms, you will know that 2 raised to 3 will be that expression. So 8 is going to be equal to 5 plus log of a to the base 3. And from there, you'll be able to find the value of a. Once you have the value of a, you just have to put it in the second expression and get the value of b. And from there, you'll be able to derive a plus b. So it's going to be very easy. It will hardly take you maybe one, one and a half minute to answer this particular question. But just because it is from logarithms, if you're leaving it, then you're doing a disservice to yourself. So I hope this video has given you a nice overview of what kind of traps you can fall into. I hope it has helped you. And when you take your next SimCat, you'll be aware of these traps. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, all the best to you.